At what point does Australia assess its role and its achievements or otherwise during this 9-11 decade? As the 10th anniversary approaches of the terrorist attacks on New York and Washington and the 10-year war on terror, uh, now seems like a good time. Joining me to share his view on what are the lessons, the successes, as well as the failings of the 9-11 decade is Hugh White, Professor of Strategic Studies at ANU. Hugh White is a former intelligence analyst at the ONA and was a senior Defence Department official in the 1990s. Welcome to you, Hugh White. Nice to be with you. Thanks for joining us. Now, what do you think has been the fundamental impact of the event of 9-11 and then the decade since? I know that's a very broad yeah, question. Subject. Look, I think, I think we can look at it in two ways. The first is, obviously, it brought to our attention what had probably been a significant trend for some time, and that is that, that societies like ours in America and, uh, and European societies are, are subject to a kind of threat from terrorism that we hadn't really understood before. But on the other hand, the second point is that we also, I think, very much overestimated how important that threat was. It drew us into a whole lot of engagements and commitments which in the end were counterproductive in responding to that threat and made it harder to deal with some other issues. And I think, you know, the third big point is that in that same decade, terrorism wasn't the only thing that was going on, the war on terror wasn't the only thing that was going on. There was also some huge developments elsewhere in the world, particularly I think in Asia, where the rise of China and the rise of India and so on have really, you know, transformed Australia's strategic environment, transformed our economic environment in some ways. And I think one of the judgments that people will make about this decade as they look back from the future will be that 9-11 that and the global war on terror that flowed from it distracted us from paying attention to the really big things that were happening. So you think those other issues, particularly the rise of China and perhaps nuclear threat in countries like Pakistan, are bigger threats, were bigger threats in the uh, last well, decade? Well, I think they, it, they, they do constitute a bigger shift in Australia's strategic circumstances, a bigger shift in America's strategic circumstances. It's, it's important to get the balance right here. It's not that terrorism is not significant. It is a significant threat. I think it's important that governments take it seriously. But for a while after 9-11, government started thinking, Australian government started thinking and saying that this was the biggest threat that the international system and the countries like Australia had faced strategically since the Second World War or the Cold War. And I think to imagine that Al-Qaeda, serious though, challenge though it is, is more significant to Australia than the relationships between the strongest powers in Asia and how the United States and China are going to get on, how Japan and China are going to get on. Things are much more significant issues for us in the longer term. So you are essentially saying that the risk of terrorism, particularly directly after 9-11, was seriously overhyped? I think it was seriously overhyped. I think, uh, that, that, as I say, the challenge is to get the balance right. I do think societies like Australia's do have to pay attention to the fact that terrorism, what became clear to us on 9-11 was that terrorism is a more significant risk to us than we thought, but also recognise that actually we live with lots of risks in, in our society and we don't want to become paralysed by them, we want to manage them effectively, we want to do what we can to minimise them, but we don't want to let them take over our life. And for a while after 9-11, I think particularly in America, but in Australia as well. We, we kind of lost proportion on this issue. All right. Well, on the other hand, if you say that the risk from al-Qaeda and terrorism, you know, is is and was serious or was serious straight after 9-11, does that mean that the billions spent to try and secure us, try and protect us and try and break um, and crush those terrorist networks was badly spent or was it in fact well spent? Well, I think some of it was well spent and some of it was badly spent, you know, as you'd expect from a government program. In some ways, there are some quite impressive achievements. And one of the reasons why this is sometimes a bit hard to recognise is that the terrorist attacks that you prevent are, you know, don't really make a big impact because they don't happen. Of course, happen. We, we didn't know they you were know, going there to happen. Is, there has been some significant successes. For example, there was a, there was a, a well-developed plot to destroy a large number, something like a dozen international airliners over the Pacific that was foiled. Uh, early in the decade. And had that gone ahead, then we would be talking about terrorism in a, in a very different way. Likewise, within Australia, there have been people arrested for um, terrorism-related charges, brought to trial, tried and convicted. And I think, you know, what has to be, you know, a judgment, fair judgment is to say, say that there was a serious issue at stake there. So that we have we have stopped some bad things happening. And I think there are probably some other potential attacks that we don't know about where the intelligence stopped them happening earlier on. So I think there have been some successes. On the other hand, the billions, the trillions wasted in Iraq and Afghanistan, 
I think that's all been wasted money. I think a lot of the money that's Why? been... Why? So are you saying that our involvement there is still wasted money? Uh, I believe so. I, do, I don't believe that, um, that the operations in either Iraq or Afghanistan have been a cost-effective way of addressing the, the threat of terrorism. So the loss of life there, are they no, no, are they I, no longer worth uh, I, being involved in those? No, the, I, I, I mean, not only the billions, but the actual but the loss lives. of soldiers' Absol lives? Absolutely. This is a very serious question. Uh, I don't think that uh, military operations of the sort we've been undertaking in Afghanistan for some years now aren't, have been effective in the past, uh, have, a, have any real chance of being effective in the future in reducing the threat of terrorism to Australia. And that being so, I think we have to think very carefully as to whether we should be continuing with these operations.